Republican Representative and House Oversight Chairman Jason Chaffetz has announced today that he is not going to be seeking re-election in 2018. We have a statement from Mr. Chaffetz. Let's see if we accept his reasoning for why he will not be running again. After long consultation with my family and yeah. prayerful consideration, yeah. I have decided I will not be a candidate for any office in 2018. I have made a personal decision to return to the private sector, as so many of them do. Yes. I have long advocated public service should be for a limited time and not a lifetime or full career. Sure. After more than 1500 nights away from my home, it is time. I may run again for public office, but not in 2018. He finally said, I love serving in Congress, but I love my family more. <laughs> I also love getting millions of dollars to do a few hours of work per year as a lobbyist more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So look, uh, there's always a, a couple of possibilities here. Uh, one, of course, the mainstream media takes it at face value. Like, oh, he wants to spend more time with his family. No, he doesn't, dude. Nobody actually believes that. Yeah. And we've looked into yeah. his family, they're not that interesting, okay? <laughs> Um, so number two possibility is uh, a girl. Number three possibility is a boy. <laughs> okay. Number four possibility is money. Yeah. Here I'm ruling money. Okay. But we don't know for sure. So uh, what's curious about this? First of all, let's just dismiss one other thing. Oh, I mean, you know, I'm gonna spend more time with my family, and I've had enough of that. And the politics it can be wearing. And yeah. All that is true, but these guys love it. This guy seeks the spotlight at every opportunity. You might get tired of it, not chaff, it's nowhere. In fact, he then destroys that by coming out and saying, "Oh, might I run for governor in 2020 of Utah? I am very, very seriously considering that. What happened? I thought you were tired of politics and oh, golly gee, my family and all that stuff. So apparently you're not that tired. So if he says that he's very seriously considering running for governor, in Utah, that means it's not likely to be a girl or a boy. <laughs> okay, it's more likely to be. Can I make a couple of million bucks in yeah. two years between being in the house and being a governor? Yeah. And plus, I'll make more money because these guys will think I'm going back in the government. Yeah, and say might run again. Yeah, revolving door, mm -hmm. and that's a bigger paycheck. Mm -hmm. If I'm leaving government for good, I still have my buddies inside there. But if I'm going back, cha-ching. Yeah. He's like, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna sit there in Congress for two years being a schlep? Who cares, right? And at least it was fun when we were in the opposition and I could just blame everything on Obama. Now I have to defend Trump. Ugh, I gotta get out of here and get paid. That is the well, likely answer here. Defend Trump and at least theoretically, he's supposed to be watching out for what Trump does. Yeah. To the extent that any of them are, I mean, that's his position. He's supposed to be doing that sort of oversight. And so as we bid him an early adieu, I wanna remind you of what a disaster he will be, would be, and will continue to be at least for the next couple of years in that position. So we showed you a couple of weeks back, interview with The Atlantic, it was McKay Coppins who talked with Chaffetz about his position, asked him some questions. She said, I asked Chaffetz if, it was, if he was concerned about Trump reaping financial rewards from his presidency, but he just shrugged. Which is the reaction you'd want from the guy whose job it is to watch out for those sorts of conflicts of interest. Chaffetz specifically said he's already rich, he's very rich. I don't think he ran for office to line his pockets even more. I just don't see it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and when he was asked about Jared Kushner's family exploring a $400 million deal, you can put this next graphic, with a Chinese company over one of the buildings while he serves as a foreign policy advisor to the president, was that worthy of investigation? Chaffetz says, I don't see how that affects the average American and their taxpayer dollars. Just the fact that a staff person's family is making money, it's not enough. $400 million is not enough. The world is not enough at that point. And so that's the guy. He's not gonna personally profit, he's already rich, he's very rich. I don't think he wants to line his pockets by leaving office and becoming a lobbyist. Yeah, he's the House Oversight Chairman. His job is to do oversight of the I mean, administration. Look, the, if you're a Republican House Oversight Committee Chairman when you got a Republican president, that's kind of a terrible job. Especially if it's Trump. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like terrible because you, 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 your party loyalties are saying, I, I don't really want to make trouble for the president. But I've got this president, especially Trump, who's sort of wildly out of control. Yeah. So my whole job is to like, pretend, like I'm pretending to do oversight. But I'm, what I'm really doing is political defense. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a great job. See, normally it'd be no big deal. You got a guy like Mike Pence or Mitt Romney, they're smart enough to stay within the lines. So you just take a vacation for two years, right, or four years, no big deal. But a guy like Trump, he doesn't know where the lines are. 
So if you take a vacation like you normally would if you're a Republican oversight chairman and when a Republican is the president, then you could get caught. Right, so every oh, day you're waking damn up. Damn it, yeah. he actually did something impeachable or something right, horrific yeah. and I didn't do anything, now I'm in trouble. Every day you're waking up in that job and you're like, you look at a Trump headline, you're like, <laughs> oh, God, how am I gonna explain this and not sound ridiculous yeah. and pretend I'm doing my oversight job but actually protect Trump? I mean, that's, a, that's, that's gotta not be a pleasant gig. Yeah. So which leads me to the final question, which is why now? That's the part that I found to be curious because we're really early in yeah. to this two year term, remember mm. members of the house are two year terms. So he could have announced this 18 months in, maybe if you wanna be really helpful to the Republican party a year ahead of time so they could find a better candidate. But to do it within two months of this term, that's curious. Mm -hmm. So that's the only part that makes me go, hmm, I don't know if it's just to go grab the couple mm. million bucks before he runs for governor. Maybe he knows something we don't know and this is him Pulling the shoe, going, hey man, man, I'm out of here, man. I, I didn't do any of it. I don't, I didn't. If he says from going forward, now that I'm leaving Congress, I'm not sure if it, if I'm the right guy for oversight. Maybe Paul Ryan to help the party should find someone who's going to stay around. Then you know he definitely knows something we don't know, and he's trying to get the hell out of Dodge before that thing blows up on Trump and the Republican Party. So that part we don't know yet, but we'll see. It depends on his further actions. Podcast the Young Turks anytime you want. TYTnetwork.com slash join. I think it's weird. No, it's not weird. In fact, you'll think, you know, I'm like a smart person. Do it now. TYTnetwork.com slash join.